foldable smartphones. They are here, but are they here to stay? Well, let's take a close look at what foldables could mean for the future of smartphones. Hey guys, Ash here from C4 Retech and let's get started. If you do end up liking this video, please don't forget to turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon. Before we start, do you guys remember when the first foldable was showcased? Was it in 2018 or 2017? Be honest, do not look, leave a comment, do it. I'll tell you the answer. Go on, leave a comment. Okay, the correct answer is, well, neither. It was all the way back in CES 2013 by none other than Samsung. It was little more than a working concept back then, but now in 2019, six years later, we are starting to see it become a reality. Foldable smartphones are slowly making their way into the market. The world's first foldable smartphone, the FlexPi, arrived at CES earlier this year. And we've seen some concepts showcased by the likes of Samsung and Xiaomi. It's also expected that Samsung will come out of their first foldable phone this year as well. Now, is this cause for excitement? Yes, the concept of a foldable phone is cool and all, but what functionality does a foldable phone bring over a traditional smartphone? Well, not much, right? At least that's what I felt initially. Later, I sat down and thought long and hard about it, and I came to the conclusion that this new form factor might just have its own unique use cases. Of course, the most obvious one is better media consumption. Larger, higher resolution screens equals larger pictures, which generally means you get a better experience. People consume a ton of content on their phones these days, and larger displays do make sense. The second use case has to do with reading. Yes, reading is also a form of media consumption, and if you, like me, read a lot, then you might end up feeling that the phone screen is a bit too cramped. With foldable phones, you get to stretch it out and boom, e-reader. The third thing I thought about was a larger screen in one's pocket should translate to a larger canvas to work on. A larger screen plus say a stylus could be appealing to digital artists and on-the-go photo and video editors. Flagship devices are already as powerful as entry-level Ultrabooks. The performance is already there, it just needs to be tapped into. A company like Samsung already has a head start when it comes to styluses. The S Pen from their Note line would be a perfect companion to go with their foldable phones. The S Pen is a great little stylus and I've always felt it could do a lot more on a bigger canvas and foldables could make that a reality. Multitasking should also greatly improve with a larger screen. You could have multiple apps open at the same time with features like drag and drop to go along with it. Our phones could theoretically do more and close the gap between the traditional laptop and a smartphone. Now, we do have tablet-like devices such as a Surface Pro and iPad Pro that already do most of the things that I've stated above, but these are dedicated devices. You need to buy them separately, and it's also another thing you need to carry, another thing you need to charge, another thing that's gonna need data. But with a smartphone, it's always in your pocket and you're always connected. So I do think there is a certain appeal for a device that can fit a larger screen at the same time become compact when you need it. You know, remain in your pocket. Now while these are some of the positive aspects of foldables, there are also some things that are kind of causes for concern. Foldable phones do have a few glaring issues. First is the folding mechanism itself. With a foldable phone, the display isn't covered by glass. It's covered by plastic essentially, which makes sense. Given glass can't handle the amount of bending and flexing a foldable phone requires, plastic can. But as we've seen with phones like the Moto Z Force, which has plastic on the display, it might not crack, it might bend, but it's gonna scratch really easily. There is also the question of durability. It is to be seen how well these screens hold up over time with all the flexing that comes with day-to-day -day use. There are also certain device-specific niggles that need to be figured out. Like say with the concept that Xiaomi showed off, where do you place the cameras? If you throw them in the rear, you would need to unfold the device every time you take a picture. The prototype also doesn't seem to have spaces at the front where you can fit cameras. Samsung's implementation, on the other hand, has a somewhat tiny screen to the front, meaning you compromise on normal phone usage for a bigger screen. It is understandable though, because there is one other glaring issue with foldables, the aspect ratio problem. You see, most devices today carry a 18 by 9 panel or 19 by 9 panel. So when you fold out a phone that is in this form factor, what you essentially get is an 18 by 18 display, basically one by one meaning the display would be a square, 
And a square display isn't great for consuming any sort of media. It's just gonna be black bars all over. Now, this could be a reason why Samsung has chosen to go with a small display with clunky bezels to the front, allowing them to fit a much more wider display with the device unfolded. Software is also going to be an issue. From what we've seen so far, software optimization is going to be crucial. You need software that is going to be able to take advantage of these screens on these phones. If not, foldables will just end up being glorified tech demos like smart watches. Finally, the most important factor is going to be pricing. Samsung's foldable phone is expected to be priced at 1600 US dollars, meaning in India, you could probably see these phones at around 1.3 to 1.5 lakhs, which is just insane. 60, 70 K is stuff we are getting used to, but this is going to be way too expensive when these phones are not going to fly off shelves. Now, all these issues should improve over time. Whenever a new piece of technology appears in the market, it's generally very unpolished, but over time things improve. Remember the CES 2013 announcement we showed in the beginning? Well, Samsung unveiled one other thing in that event, the Note Edge prototype. This was a phone with the display just curved to one side, and over the years, Samsung has tweaked this design, played with it a lot, and now the curved displays are a mainstay of both their Note NS series of phones. It also turned out to be one of the features that makes their phones stand out amongst the competition, Yes, we've seen other curved display phones, but it is still one of the defining factors of a Galaxy S or a Note phone. So yes, the first generation of foldables will be very expensive, they might not be the prettiest, and they definitely will face growing pains. Give it some time and I think it will become something people would want to use. And with that, we get to the end of this video. It is time I bid you adieu. Please share this video with friends and family if you can. Do check out our monthly giveaway if you haven't yet. Thumbs up, thumbs down based on what you felt about this video. Also subscribe and turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of my daily content. Thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4 Retech. And I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.